In the last episode, we looked at some theory and learned that not all ESP32 modules are good with external antennas. As promised, today we will continue the video and look at some antennas with gain. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. I learned an easy way of comparing Wi-Fi antennas from Andrew McNeil. You find a link to his channel in the description. He uses a PC and software called Vistumbler. It shows all access points around you on your PC screen. To test antennas, I go to our terrace on the top of the house, connect a USB Wi-Fi module to my laptop and connect it to the antenna under test. Then I select a remote access point and write down its RSSI. Please keep in mind that minus 70 dB is more signal than minus 100 dB. Now I can change to another antenna and should get the relative performance. Of course, only if nothing changes in between the access point and my antenna. This is why I do it several times and sometimes with different access points. You can also estimate the directionality of your antenna by watching the RSSI of a particular access point while turning your antenna. Really simple. Speaking of directional antennas, of course we want to have one, or better a few of them to compare. I have here a homemade helical and two panel antennas purchased on eBay. For ease of comparison I use known access points. Three of them are in the same building, roughly 500 meters away. Let's start with an ordinary omnidirectional antenna. As expected, it does not detect the access points. Next is this panel antenna. It should have 14 dBi gain. Now I see the access point. Not a stable connection, but definitely better than with the omnidirectional antenna. The next is my homemade helical antenna. It is straightforward to build if you use these instructions. And using this calculator, you can make a helical for any frequency. As proposed, I used a PVC tube bought in the do-it-yourself shop nearby. And as you can see, I confused diameter with radius. And the first holes were wrong. Now I can use two of them to mount the antenna to a pole. I think this is a good excuse. For the helix, I use a simple trick. This copper band is made to connect small solar panels. It is very flexible. I fixed it on one side of the tube using captain tape. The build took less than an hour, including the wrongly drilled holes. But unfortunately, it had a very bad SWR. After some investigations, I found the solution. A piece of copper with the length of lambda quarter attached here did the trick. I use this copper band for several other things, especially for shielding. It is very flexible and has a sticky side. The antenna also should have 15 dBi gain. And if I compare it with a panel antenna, it behaves similarly. So longer is not always better. Sometimes thicker or broader is better, or at least as good. So we answered that vital question often asked by viewers. We evaluated the antennas we can use for the long range test. And I found a place which is visible from here and also can be reached by bicycle or car. It is around seven kilometers away, suitable for a first try. But wait, what about legality? The panel antenna should have a gain of 15 dBi. Let's say 12 if we subtract the overpromise of the seller and the cable loss. Six are allowed by the FCC. All in all, we are 6 dB too high. Fortunately, the ESP32 has a simple possibility to reduce the output power. So we go with 13 dBm output power and we are okay for the transmitter. The ESP on the receiving side does not emit if we use this sketch. I checked it with the spectrum analyzer. I can even take the second panel antenna with me to increase the gain of the whole link. 
or if I only want to send sensor data in one direction, I could use a omnidirectional antenna for the transmitter and a directional antenna for the receiver. Anyway, we will use these two sketches. Unfortunately, I'm no more allowed to read the names of the sketches provided by this project. According a viewer, this would be politically incorrect. But at least I made sure that the PCBs I use are green, so it should be okay. But before I leave to the range test in nature, I would like to show you the effect of output power reduction on power consumption of the ESP32. We all know that it consumes quite some power when the transmitter is on. Fortunately, only for a short period. I use my new child meter to measure the short current spikes. And really, the ESP draws up to 355 milliampere at 20 dBm output. If we go down to minus 1 dBm, you see that the output power really is lower. And also the power draw. But the difference in power consumption is only about 10% on average, because the peaks are very short. It might be different if you deep sleep your MCU between the transmissions. Then savings could be higher, at least in percentage. First, I wanted to test Espressif's promise to bridge one kilometer in long range mode. I mounted a standard ESP32 development board on a short pole and took my bike to pedal towards the opposite side of the valley. Here you see our house. The connection worked, but only when I turned the receiving ESP in the right direction. And as you see, the RSSI is quite low. For a productive use, I would add some antennas to stabilize the connection. But yes, it worked. Now I mount two antennas on two poles and connect ESP32s to each of them. One transmits in 11B and the other in long range mode. And because it started to rain, I took my car and drove to the point I found using the online service created by VA2DBE. It showed an old castle where I should have a line of sight. For my American friends, yes, we have ancient castles everywhere, usually in nice places. If you want to see another one, maybe you watch my video on my attempt to establish the LoRa world record. The weather is awful and I'm not sure how much influence this humidity in the air has on 2.4 GHz signals. So I start with a place 2.5 km away. I still have a reception in the long range mode using the directional patch antenna. I did not check the normal mode because the RSSI values were already quite low. The next location is 4.7 km away. To check if I have line of sight, I brought my LoRa tracker with me. It connected to my home gateway without any problems. Unfortunately, both Wi-Fi modes did not work anymore. On my way back, I stopped at a distance of 1.5 km. Both modes worked with a directional patch antenna. I had no reception with the PCB antennas. An interesting detail. The RSSI value of regular Wi-Fi is higher than with the long range mode, even if I use the same board and antenna. The difference is here. The long range signal is transmitted by the patch antenna and the 11B signal by my long helix. Maybe longer is really better? I decided to investigate this mystery later, perhaps even in a video. Because the reach of the long range mode already stopped before 4.7 km, I had no need to visit the castle. Maybe next time. Maybe then the weather is better. And maybe next time I add these 2.4 GHz LoRa modules to the tests. Stay tuned. Summarized. We used the basics of antennas to plan for the next steps. We looked at the new long range mode of the ESP32 and how it can be switched on. We attached external antennas to different ESP32 modules and found some flaws and other tricks to improve the range for your devices. We found and used an easy way to compare Wi-Fi antennas and used this knowledge to select the right antennas for the following tests. 
I also showed you a self-made helical antenna. It seems that it works quite well. We understood that we have to reduce the TX power of the ESP32 to stay legal and how to do it. Lowering the output power reduced the peak currents consumed by the ESP32 considerably. The overall effect, however, was only 10% because I did not use deep sleep in this investigation. The different tests showed mixed results. The long range mode seems to be a little better than the normal mode but not too much. We should not expect wonders, because the transmitted bandwidth, as well as the bandwidth of the receiver, stays the same. So I assume that this mode will be for niches where you cannot solve your problem with a directional antenna. What experience do you have with this mode and with boards containing PCB antennas and antenna connectors? Maybe you leave a comment for the other viewers. One last thing. After returning to my lab, I can show you my trick to ease the work on my remote projects. I always use such a box where I put everything I use for this project. Simple to carry and enough space for small and bigger parts. Like that, I do not forget things and do not need to walk 10 times back and forth to my lab during a remote project. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.